A 22-year-old slacker has to take on the seven evil ex-boyfriends of Ramona Flowers to win her heart, while also trying to make it big with his band, Sex bob in and the 2010 romantic action comedy, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I'm Austin Johnson. I'm Connor Zagari. And this is Filmgasm. last week we did a top 10 films of the 2010s episode it was a blast uh adam johnson joined us for that my oldest brother uh he had scott pilgrim number 10 on his list so we're gonna Basically, chronologically, go through our list. Start with Adam, go to Connor, then to myself each week. So this will this will run us all the way till October. Don't really care. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait to discuss this film because it's uh, at this point, thirteen years later, a cult classic. It didn't take long for it to reach that status. Uh, Adam, I'm super happy to have you on board and talk about why you love this movie. Yes, happy to be here again. And uh, I think I think uh, it goes without saying we're obviously counting down backwards, ten to one. Correct. Uh, so yeah, so it'll be like my ten, then Connor's ten, then Austin's ten, and the nines, and then yeah, gonna go. And there are some shared ones. So I guess you know people who who kind of stick with the series will see that you know there's some overlap, and we'll get to that. We I think I think Austin, you determined that we're gonna do the one that's ranked higher. Um, that's correct. Our, that's okay. Okay. So like if like if I had something one and you had something four, which I think is the case, uh, yes. we'll we'll do it later for one. Yeah, for me. So. Uh, but no, happy to be here. Uh, very much enjoyed this movie. Uh, it is it is grown on me every time I've watched it. So um, really excited to talk about it. Yeah, I, yeah, I really really like it. It's it's on Netflix right now. Uh, it actually goes away at the end of the month. So if you want to check it out for you know on streaming, I, w- I would get to it. It's uh, I think that's a big. I, I would love to kind of bring that into discussion right away and talk to both of you guys about how just how fast this movie has become a part of kind of our culture. Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. It's it made like no money really you know it lost money in fact it was a bomb but it's amazing how streaming services word of mouth you know kind of nerdery can just raise a movie up and that's what happened with this one uh and i didn't really realize that in 2010 when it, when it was happening because we saw it in theaters adam but i i do think like it's rapid rise to being a cult classic like it's got really really amazing reviews uh, across the board you know uh and and good scores so i'm excited to get into that aspect but Connor, I know uh, this is your what third or fourth time with it, and you're just you're just not really a fan. Yeah, it's my second. It's my second. Second. Time. Okay. Uh, I saw this for the first time when I was in college uh, in a f- intro to film class. I, I don't remember what she was using it to teach, but I watched it and thought this is kind of weird, and then never really thought about it again. And now watching it prepared for this to prepare to talk about it, I was just like, wow, everyone in this movie is a complete asshole. Like there's okay. no, there's no one to hold on to here. Everyone's just an, in, an irredeemable douchebag. And I guess I just don't play that many video games because I wasn't that jazzed by that. I don't like quirkiness for the sake of quirkiness. And it just, it did not, it didn't take for me. Ugh. Yeah. That's so interesting because it feels like on paper, it's something that you would love. You know, it has, it literally looks like a comic book, the way it kind of unfolds. Uh, and it, you know, Edgar Wright, of course, the director is on like a different level with this movie as far as just his his style is is everywhere. You know, there's like split screen moments, almost like a Brian De Palma, like 70s or 80s style where it's just like, whoa, so much energy. And then the beginning of the movie is like a Tarantino roundtable. Oh, my God. We are introduced to all these characters in, in like 40 seconds. And then there's this amazing shot where the room gets like the the perspective we get is like elongated, right, from Knives and uh, young young Neil, <laughs> young Neil's perspective, and, and you're you're in, you know, you're in the movie already, and it's like such an amazing feat. So I I'm just like kind of blown away that you don't like it even after a second watch. <laughs> Me too. I don't. I I wanted to like it. I really was trying. I didn't go in thinking like fuck this movie. I went in with an open mind. Like come on, let's do this. And it just wasn't. It wasn't taken. And I love Edgar Wright to death. I've enjoyed every other yeah. one of his films except this one. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. A- Adam, what is it? Because on paper, Connor, it seems like would love this movie. And on paper, it seems like this would be not like in your wheelhouse. So what is it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, I said, spoke, yeah. About, you spoke about it a little bit last week, but you didn't really go into it. No, like, what I is didn't. it? What is it? So I, I, I don't really know. I like, I like, I was trying to articulate that. Cause it was like, 
you know, I had it 10 on my list and I was like, after watching, it, I was like, should I, should it have been higher? Like, like, it's like, <laughs> I like it that much. Like I was like, I, did, I, I thought maybe I'd question like, ah, is it actually one of my, you know, 10 favorite movies of the decade? And then after I was like, no, I, in terms of like kind of rewatchability and just like enjoyment, yeah. um, I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe it should be higher. So yeah, you're right. Cause like, I think Connor of the three of us, you're probably by far the biggest Marvel fan and I'm by far the, the, the least like a fan of, of Marvel movies of, of the three of us. Um, and I think there are some similarities, but I think, I think where there's a, a really big difference where, and I think maybe this is where Connor and I are, do differ because he does like Marvel movies and I'm pretty much out on them. There are some that are, that are good. No question about that. But I'm like at this point at you know, time now out on them. Um, I, I think I like the kind of like, there's no, there's no like, uh, Oh, this is like this grand thing. Like this is going to save the world. This is like this big, like, it doesn't explain any of the rules. The rules, it's just ridiculous. It's just like this fun romp that like is this contained little two hour story. And then that's it. Like there's no like grand stakes to it. Like, you know, there's not a snap where half the world dies. Just, it's just kind of like this small little kind of Canadian, you know, story. And I, yeah. that's, that's, I think what I relate to the most about it. And I also like, so I love the, I love the show succession. It's like, it's become one of my all time favorite shows. And there's no one on that show that you're, you're rooting for. Right. And so that's, that's kind of the same as this. Like, I don't, I don't need, I don't need, I'm not saying like, oh, I'm so cool. I don't need like something to root for, but I don't need something, somebody to root for in the movie. Like, I think it's funny to watch Scott. I mean, Scott, for some people, like he's like the star of the movie and he's like, obviously you know, his name is named after him. Um, He's terrible. He's like a terrible guy. Like he's just a terrible, yeah, terrible yeah. guy who's you know obviously funny at times, but um, but for the most part is like a bumbling fool who like has like no maturity level. And like, he learns some throughout the course of the movie, which I think we'll get into. Like he does, he does evolve a bit. Um, but for the most part, he's like kind of like a toxic, like young dude. So, uh, but like, that's fine. Like, that's almost funny to me. Like I, I I'm laughing at him. I'm not like laughing with him. So, um, I actually like that there's like no one that likable in it because it's just like a more realistic world. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's kind of like, that's kind of like how people treat, you know, treat each other at that age. You know, they're all kind of in the what early twenties phase. Yeah. Of their life. Um, and like that, there's kind of this, this like kind of slacker like group. So, um, I, I actually like, I respond pretty strongly to that. Just like I do like in the show succession, you know, it's almost like this is so far removed from like my world. It's like, it's, I actually enjoy watching it. So, um, if that, if that makes sense, but yeah, there's yeah. more of a kind of psychology. I think we can get into as a movie, as we keep talking about the movie, because there's a lot to it, like in terms of, uh, kind of like mentally what's going on with, with these characters. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I agree with you. I love movies that are filled with kind of like complete assholes, you know, uh, it's, one of my favorite things about a lot of my favorite directors, just, just dickheads, you know, like there's no one redeemable, no one that you are looking up to. Everyone's kind of a villain. I love movies like that. So this, this does that really well with an incredible cast. So uh, I have one, like kind of, I have a couple of like questions, one really fun, one more, um, more mainstream question to, before we get into kind of how this movie was made. Would you guys, <laughs> I'll start with the easier one first and the funnier one second. The first one is, are you guys excited? for the anime adaptation that's going to come out on Netflix. Uh, Connor, I'll start with you. Uh, not really. No. Yeah. No. Uh, Adam? <laughs> no, I'm not. No. Um, I, I'm just an anime guy. Like, I, I just, I don't respond to it at all. I've tried, I've tried a couple different shows and I, I just don't respond to it at all. Um, and also like, again, it's the contained story. Like I'm the two hours was awesome. I don't really need, I don't really need a sequel. I don't yeah. really need, like, it's good. Like it caught all these people at the perfect time. Um, it was really well done. Like the music's awesome. I don't really need, I don't really need. And that's the one thing also that too, I didn't even mention the opening bit there. Uh, the music is a huge part of what I, you know, oh, really yeah. like, yeah, I mean like that, that like era of like the kind of garage rock, like, um, slightly punky. Like I, I, I really like that music. Um, and I think it captures that time and it, it is so Canadian. I mean, there's so much, yes. it's like a very Canadian movie, but, uh, but yeah, that's, 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 that's part of the reason I, I like it so much too. Yeah. No, I, I'm excited for the anime adaptation because I, I do love animation in general and i'm excited to see what they do with it and everybody's coming back literally every single person is like did, yeah. did you say anime or animated it's anime but okay okay, okay okay still still an animated you know uh series and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know there's there's seven volumes in the uh, like original comic series like where that runs from 2004 to 2010 uh and so there's you know, obviously more story to tell there's kind of a, a volume for each you know evil x so I, I'm excited for that aspect that every, everyone, l literally no one was like, I'm good. I'm too cool for that at this point. They're all like, fuck it. Like, well, you know, I mean, why not? You know, this is, and this is, this is not just, you know, Michael Sarah and the boys. This is, you know, Brie Larson and Anna Kendrick and Aubrey Plaza and Chris fucking Evans, like some heavy, heavy hitters who were, you know, a lot of them were, you know, in their early mid twenties of time. Now they're in their mid thirties, late thirties. They're, you know, they've had full-blown careers since then. So I'm 
Super stoked to see those people come back for a creative project. I'm at least going to give it a go. Second question. This one's more fun. <laughs> Would you guys consider this movie to be a solid endorsement for the city of Toronto? <laughs> uh, <laughs> pro- probably not. I mean, I mean like, <laughs> that's the thing is like, I, I, Toronto is one of the, is like high on my list of like places I want to visit. It's, it's, it's a place yeah. I've never been. We've been to Vancouver, Austin, but never, never on the east uh, uh, coast of Toronto, of, of Canada. Um, Correct. It's super high on the list of places I'd like to go to. I've heard it's an amazing city, especially like in the summer and, you know, just tons of diversity and awesome food. Um, obviously, there's some, there's some great sports teams there. So uh, I, I would love to go there. But I, I don't necessarily leave this movie thinking like, man, that made it look so much more appealing. You know, I, I don't. <laughs> you know, that way, no. Yeah, Connor. <laughs> I think there are people out there who are such morons that they think that, you know, Toronto is a place where video game logic exists. I, I bet there are people out there who've gone to Toronto and been like, well, you know, it started punching people, hoping they turn into quarters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think that anything to give a great city more tourism, I say go for it. If they're gonna, I think they, sh- they should screen this on every flight going to Toronto. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's also Edgar Wright lived there for like six months, so he could get a good feel for the city, and not just the city. You know. Uh, certain you know urban areas but more some like outskirt stuff some more hipster type stuff which is why we see it's in the suburbs yeah yeah, we see certain music venues that are like oh man like that looks pretty fucking sick and it's you know it's because he like actually did the research to find you know like like the chaos theater at the end of the film jason schwartzman's place is a is a real building that like real music gets played at and i I thought that was i thought that was really cool and like the the dedication from this guy who's just from nowhere near Toronto is, is really, yeah. really unique. But, uh, the, but the neighborhood they live in is just like, it's just like a random, like, you know, yeah. Suburb. Just, of, of, yeah. 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 Just a, just a place. And it's very yeah. snowy in this movie, which is uh, great. No, I think that actually makes it feel like a little bit more lived in. You know what I mean? Like, I, yes, I like me too. It's not like, Oh, here, let's show you this like super touristy part of Toronto to let you know that we're here. You know, like I always hate that in movies where it's like, it's like we're in Paris. It's like the only thing that can show is like the Eiffel tower to like indicate that we're in Paris. It's like, okay, there's, you know, a million other things you could kind of do. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's not the, the most typical thing. So I actually like that, that it's just like, it's kind of more lived in, you know, slightly yeah, more graphic here, in a movie where people turn into coins, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's this massive city. Let's let, yeah, you know, let's take a, a approach where people who actually pay rent and work and live here. I always, I, I love the gag of Aubrey Plaza, like has all these different jobs. <laughs> Yeah. Like, all, like all over the area i love watching you know michael sarah watching scott like go to the record store that's just kind of like down the street that's like what he does to hang out uh and he lives in this like tiny little place with wallace who god goddamn wallace is incredible uh so this film is based on i mentioned earlier the graphic uh graphic novel series scott pilgrim versus the world it's really just called scott pilgrim like the entire seven seven volumes um uh, it was Written and illustrated by by uh, Brian Lee O'Malley, who's yeah, I mean, just wicked talented. I've never read the the actual uh, comics, but if you look at him, you look at just kind of the the panels. It, it's 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 pretty mind blowing, pretty cool stuff. You can see why a guy like Edgar Wright would find uh, find something in this. So Edgar Wright himself directed, while also co writing the screenplay with Michael Bacall. Uh, really good tandem there. Uh, just just incredible stuff. This movie's extremely layered, you know, filled with Easter eggs, filled with little things, little gags here and there. Uh, and it's really rewarding if you rewatch it over and over. And at this point, I've probably seen it, I don't know, 20 times. And it just kind of gets a little bit better every time. And that's the sign of that's a sign of something that's, you know, got a high, high rewatch, rewatchability rate. Uh, filming began in March of 2009, wrapped in August of 2009. And it was shot entirely in Toronto. I, I love that. They could have done the whole like New York thing. It's like, oh, it's in Toronto. What you? Well, I can tell that that was Central Park. You know, I love that it actually did the Toronto thing. So that's kind of why I asked the question of is this a solid endorsement? But or, uh, yeah. or they could they could have done the uh, the Marvel thing where it's like, hey, we're in Sokovia, but it's like a suburb of Atlanta. You know, like it's like so <laughs> it's so obviously just like a lot. Yeah. In Georgia, like, you know, it's like yeah, they're like yeah, the uh, VFX houses are down the street, so fuck you. Yeah, we're uh, <laughs> we're gonna stay we're gonna stay right Georgia, here. Georgia hey, gave us the best tax credit, so we're gonna take that. They, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they have the power to do that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I also mentioned earlier that the film was a box office bomb. It made just under $50 million on a budget of nearly $70 million. So just, just not great. Pretty disappointing. But it has clearly recouped that from DVD. You know, it became kind of one of those, oh, everyone owns it, showing it to friends and whatnot. Half the people that I know that love this movie didn't see it in theaters. Yeah. They heard about it from someone who was like, what? I thought you were a nerd. You should watch this. You know, it's like one of those things. And I... I just I, I love that about it. I love that it has this this power to just sustain. And I feel like Edgar Wright kind of knew that. He has already he'd already done so much cool stuff. You know, shout out to the Cornetto 
trilogy, you know, the, the guy, the guy's a superstar. Uh, so he kind of, it's kind of like a passion project. And I, I respect that. Yeah. I mean, I, Edgar Wright is one of the smartest filmmakers I've ever, you know, who's like his screen, the way he writes a script is like a, um, it's like a, a yin yang kind of thing. It's like, it's yeah. always, you know, reinforcing the other side, the beginnings, reinforcing the ending with similar dialogue. It's always coming back. And you do see that in Scott Pilgrim. It's a very smart script. It, it, it did make me laugh. Like I'm not calling it a total loss at all. It does have its moments. Um, and a lot of that comes from just, you know, Edgar Wright putting his own spin on the source material. Uh, yeah. I love that. This was a passion. He did this in between two and three of the Cornetto trilogy. Yeah. Like he Crazy. put the Cornettos on pause. Cause he's like, I got to do Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> yeah. It's wild, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what a cool life <laughs> to, to be living. Uh, so before I get into like the ratings for the, for this, I, I know Adam and I both have this as a four and a half stars on letterbox. Connor, what do you have it at? It's a three star. It's a three, three star. star. Okay. That's not, you know, no total dud. You see some stuff. So that's, that's quite all right. Uh, it's rocking a 7.5 and IMDb. Pretty good. 82% Rotten Tomatoes and a solid 3.9 on Letterboxd. Over 200,000 Letterboxd users have given this movie five stars. Good God. That's pretty impressive. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's high. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 one of those very... It, you it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very much so. You know, there's there's the haters out there for sure, and it, we'll, we'll get to those <laughs> towards the end of the episode. It's just funny. The people that hate it, and, and Connor, you're definitely not in this camp. The people who hate it, it's such silly, silly reasons, and I want to talk about that uh, later down the line, uh, just because it's like, well, clearly you don't enjoy movies. Uh, again, Scott Pilgrim is currently streaming on Netflix, and that that's fantastic. It leaves May 1st, so check it out if you can. But I feel like if you do like this movie, you probably own it. I actually uh, got this at Blockbuster when it was starting to close down. So it has kind of like that weird grainy cover. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, it was like three dollars, you know, because they were just getting rid of everything. That's one of the movies I, I snagged. Ha. Cool. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Y'all remember oh, like when it was oh, just? Of course, this... I remember that. Yeah, you know what's funny? <laughs> awesome. So the the blockbuster there used to be a blockbuster. You, you might not even remember this. Remember right down the street from where you live now? There's that church UUMC where I yeah. used to play like men's basketball league in. Yeah. So there was a blockbuster right down the street from that next to, next to uh, where the Sonic is now. Okay. So there was a blockbuster right there. I think I think it's a Five Guys now, that Five Guys is right there. So interesting. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that's that was the building. So yeah, that store. I remember I I got to my game like super early. Like I missed I missed took the time and I was like ah like this is so this is this would have been like 2010 like probably yeah right around 2010 2011 ish right, probably right before I moved and uh, that store was closing and so I went in there I bought like I don't know seven movies for like yeah 20 bucks like it was just you know, I got like the informant and like you know just like these random movies yeah like that you know like that that were just like they're just they're just trying to get rid of them as well but and they all have that kind of yeah you're talking about like a grainy cover that's like clearly like they didn't have the actual photo you know like with it or whatever but um but yeah that's the one that's the one I got it from I, I actually have never owned Scott Scott Pilgrim vs. World um maybe I need to add that to the okay the okay that's interesting so how have you like how many times do you think you've seen it since you saw it in theaters? Since we saw it in theaters in New York, uh, five or six times. And when do you feel like you've done it the most? Just through streaming? Yeah, it's been okay. on Netflix for a long time. So on the ten year anniversary, I read a, I read a um an oral history of it, and then uh wanted to watch it because of that, and then um was watching it you know with somebody, and they're like, oh, we should show this to other people, and they're like, yeah, yeah. So so I watched it with somebody else, like the next the next year, and then again the next year. So it's like. In the last like four years, I've seen it like almost every year, essentially. So, um, so since then, but yeah, but before that, I'd probably seen it on either streaming, and then I watched it with uh, some people, you know, also Patrick and Shani. I watched it at their house one time. Um, Patrick okay. Did it, so yeah, they own it, and I watched it there is like a long time ago. So, um, so yeah, but no, the, it's been on Netflix for a while though. I'd say for a few years, it's been on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a yeah, it's one of those that is going to do really well for your your service if you have it there. So it's crazy. I wonder where it's, where it's moving to. I don't know. Lucky, lucky Hulu, maybe lucky HBO yeah. Max. I don't know. Uh, oh, it's just Max yeah. now. Yeah, that's right. I'm never, <laughs> never, ever going to call it just Max. Uh, well, I see. I, I actually think I am because this is maybe a topic for a different day. But I think you got I Max. Am, yeah, because because <laughs> I like it has everything. Like HBO is like is like elite to me. So like I didn't like that. I call things like oh HBO Max and there's there's stuff on there that wasn't HBO. You know, like now HBO will have its own like little vertical on Max and it's like okay that makes more sense. Like. Like HBO should remain kind of like the elite of the of the of the thing. So it's like 
it's like it's max it's not hbo max it's like it's max and then on on max there is the hbo segment which is where i'll spend most of my time yeah i, I that's funny because i just watched i love you i love you man last night uh mm. i just want to throw something on that was you know nothing and uh, i do that occasionally and i end up like critiquing it as if it's fucking citizen kane you know and uh, i was <laughs> i was like laughing my ass off at the bit where jason siegel's character sydney and uh paul rudd's character peter they're talking on the phone and and uh sydney's like come on man like rush is playing the show like you got to come with me and <laughs> paul rudd's like it's sunday i watch hbo with, with my fiance on sundays and he's like come on man you have the rest of your life to watch prestige tv you know every sunday he said it's sunday have you ever watched HBO programming on Sunday nights? It's spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's 2009. That's, you know, 14 years ago. I thought that was such yeah. an awesome awesome joke that's lasted uh now for a long time. So yeah, that's a great that's a great point. Just Max. Uh, I love anyways. You, I love you man. That's one of the DVDs I bought at that blockbuster. Nice. There you go. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. 2009. Uh yeah, yeah this uh, golden era for for comedies. <laughs> uh So yeah, who who knows what it'll end up on, but that, that's quite all right. Uh, I have a couple things I want to do before we get to the awards. Uh, this one, especially, this is a big shout out to Connor because I know Edgar Wright's one of his guys, even if this is not his favorite movie. Connor, yeah, I've never, I've never really heard this from you. If you're going from Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim, The World's End, Baby Driver, uh, Last Night in Soho, like all, all these movies, like, like what is his best? What's his masterpiece to you? His masterpiece is easily Hot Fuzz. Like, oh, well, yeah, love no it. question about it. That is one of the most brilliant screenplays I've ever seen. It's a g- great throwback to 80s action classics. Also, cult films like The Wicker Man. It brings together all these British thespians playing way against type. It yeah. is so funny. It's so smart. And I could watch it all day. That is hands down his masterpiece. I love that. Adam, I feel like your answer is going to be a little different, but I'm curious. It is. It is. I haven't seen. I haven't seen. I've seen. I've seen every movie he's made. Uh, but I haven't seen Hot Fuzz or uh, uh, Shaun of the Dead in a while. So I, I need to almost like refresh before I did that. I, I watched The World's End. I saw it in theaters and I watched it a couple years ago. Um, man, Baby Driver is really good. I watched that pretty recently yeah. too. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, Scott Pilgrim is my favorite. I, I would say, um, but favorite and best is a different question. So uh, yeah, yeah, fair. I don't know. I don't know. I I I, I need to revisit the first two. For the yeah. of the before I can properly answer that, um, because I just like I can like re- I remember liking them. You know what I mean? It's like that's like one. It's like the memory I have. It's not like I just don't. I can't like I need to see them again before I can kind of say it. Uh, the world's end is so funny. I, I like I and, and oh. like, like really dark at times. But but uh, uh, I watched that like maybe yeah two or three years ago, and I I, I forgot how good that was. But um, yeah, I need to see those first two before I can properly answer that. But my favorite is is Scott Pilgrim. I would say my 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 favorites are scott pilgrim and the world's end all the way yeah hot fuzz is so fucking good and shawn of the dead of course is the one that gets him kind of foot in the door baby driver is just like oh wow look at this guy like just kind of on top yeah. of his game now i will say i i like i watched last night in soho i don't remember a fucking like it's, minute I, of it it's my least favorite it's my least favorite i, I just was so i didn't i didn't see it in theaters because i think connor i think you told me like ah, i don't know man like maybe it was you maybe someone else is, is that right I, I did see it in theaters, um, and I remember thinking it was good, but also pretty forgettable, and it didn't seem like it would be up your alley. I don't know if I told you that, but I probably it, it makes sense. It, yeah, you were like, hey, maybe wait for streaming, and I did, and I watched it, and I was like, yeah, no. like this is I, I just don't see myself ever revisiting it unless I have a real reason to. You know, I'm not going to do it in my own time, whereas pretty much all of his other movies, I'm good. I'm in. I'm, I'm game, so... I love that. I also wanted to kind of see where you guys, this is to me, this is like the most fun conversation around, around Scott Pilgrim versus the world is, is the cast. Um, just a murderer's row of, of, of people. And it's like a really interesting hierarchy. If you were to make a movie now with all these people in it, you know, my first question, uh, I'll start with you, Connor. My first question would be, if you're to make a movie with everyone in this now, who, who gets first billing? Oh, hmm. I guess, it, I mean, it, it, considering, you know, box office potential, it's got to be Chris Evans, right? Yeah. Okay. I so. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. So, so Chris Evans and then Brie Larson? Brie Larson or Anna Kendrick. And I think Aubrey Plaza is probably up at that point, too. Uh, yeah, Plaza is reaching that. Yes, for sure. I, I was going to say Plaza might be like right this second, you know, kind of like a higher Q rating than than Brie Larson. Yeah. Okay. Do you think Michael yeah, Sarah has gone down? 
for oh, sure. Oh well, he doesn't. He for doesn't. Sure. He doesn't like do movie. He does. He yeah. does a uh, stage he's stuff. He he was he's he was nominated for a Tony. Yeah, he's yeah. not. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, See, no, I never like really a... liked him that much, so I never really paid attention to his career trajectory. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, all. Stage. I'm not, yeah. I'm not crazy about Michael Sarah, but like as as a performer, I mean, I like, I love Superbad. I really like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I like some stuff he's done. But why I became a fan of him was during uh, the pandemic, like the initial lockdown, 2020. Uh, the Criterion Channel put out a a collection of movies that he had chosen, like his favorite Criterion movies. And he is just a straight up advocate for like international cinema for, you know, artsy films. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I had no idea he was this knowledgeable. But hearing him speak about movies, I felt the same way about Bill Hader, who's also, you know, uh, the voice in in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, It's amazing when you hear these kind of comedy guys talk about, you know, movies from the 50s and and Japan, you know, and you're like, what? (laughs) Like... Like I, I heard Bill Hader talk about Ikiru, and I heard heard Michael Sarah talk about like, you know, old uh, uh, different Akira Kurosawa movies and and different French films, and I was like, Whoa. I had just no idea, you know, and and it kind of opens up a whole like new respect for those kind of kind of actors. And Michael Sarah is like a freak of nature when it comes to his knowledge of of, of cinema. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, Hater is too. No, I know. I've heard Hater talk about that. He he can go super deep on like a ton of stuff. Yes. Like, yeah, just like a total like film geek. But um, yeah, no, I I think uh, Sarah, a, a Canadian. Um, he, yeah. He, he, yeah. I, I'm not. I wasn't like a huge fan. I'm. I, yeah. Super bad in this. So the two that like stand out for me, like like I've seen Youth and Revolt, and it's like okay, he's like charming. Yeah. Times, yeah. But it's like, but maybe it's just like whatever. I just don't like you know. It's like on year show. one. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Just not. Yeah. Not for me. But no, he's he's pretty much exclusively on the stage now. So um, I guess he's just kind of chosen a different different path. You know. More I did. Yeah. I did appreciate him stepping out his wheelhouse in Molly's game. Molly's game. I, w- I was hoping, yeah, mm. Player X, yeah, yeah, oh, such a fucking sadist. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing in that movie. Yeah, he was, and I, I don't know if you guys watched Arrested Development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he was good in that. He was good, but he's he kind was. of just for me. He was every film he did. He was just playing that again. Yeah, and I, I just got tired of that. Yeah, that's fair. I, I've heard people say that's one of the reasons Scott Pilgrim vs. the World did so poorly in theaters is people were just like, I. I if this guy's the leading man, like I'm, I'm good. You know, like I, I don't need to see that. And the fact that it's so bloody Canadian, you know, a lot of American yes. moviegoers are, yes. I'm not, a, a lot of like American moviegoers are not going to be down with this kind of comedy. And, and, you know, it's not that they don't understand it. They're just it's not really weird. Not, it's a really weird yeah. movie. Like it, it, yeah. it definitely yeah. is like a very strange movie. <laughs> yeah. Extremely strange. Uh, let's see who else we got. Yeah. Anna Kendrick, you mentioned Connors is big time. Mary Elizabeth Winstead has kind of had an interesting career since then. Jason Schwartzman. Yeah. He's definitely a, he's definitely a great character yeah. actor, and you're right, Connor Ken, Anna Kendrick was is yeah huge. I mean, still so, yeah, that's yeah. That, yeah. I mean, yeah. the pitch like, perfect the alone perfect, like yeah. held her yeah. to a yeah. comedy like you know place. In the I same. love Anna Kendrick. I think she's great. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I think she's. I actually think she's like underrated. Uh, uh, also, uh, still with Bill Hader, I believe. So that's that's great. Uh, up in the air, another movie oh, got, up, up in the, the air at that, at that blockbuster, two thousand nine, two thousand nine, <laughs> up in the air. We did that on Oscar Sunday way back when. Great, up, nice. great movie, great movie. Yeah. She was up for an Oscar. Um, Real up quick, for an Oscar. I think Bill oh, Hader's up. with Ali Wong now, right? Oh, I think he has moved on. I, 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 I don't keep up with that as much as uh, maybe I. I don't, uh, I, I don't either. I just I remember seeing that in passing. Recently no, Hater. Thought, like, there's oh. the, there was a Rachel Bilson phase. There's a there was a Anna Kendrick phase, and I guess now Ali Wong. So Stickman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bill. <laughs> you 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 dog. Bill Bill Hater. <laughs> I'll say this: one Stick of the best. <laughs> One of the best parts of Bo is afraid is the fact that Bill Hader is in it for like five seconds. That was that was awesome. Uh, me and Connor looked at each other. Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> uh, who else? Let's see. Um, Johnny Simmons is kind of a you know on the radar, but he is great in this movie. Uh, Allison Pill also great in this movie. Uh, Mark Weber, who's like gone on to direct like five movies of his own, pretty crazy. Uh, uh, yeah, this, also it, Karen, married, Karen, married married to Teresa uh, Teresa Palmer. Yes, that that is correct. Uh, your your guy, Karen Culkin. Uh, yep. Roman Roy. Yeah, Roman Roy. This is yep. is this not is this, this not is the, his, his audition <laughs> laying the foundations for Roman Roy? Yes, that yeah, definitely, per, definitely. pretty hilarious, right? Uh, yeah, it's just it's just such an interesting cast. I, I think that's what I'm always blown away by most is that and the music. Just kind of like wow, how they get all these people on the same screen? You know, uh, it's, it was oh, and, first movie. 
Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that nuts? Um, also, kind of remind me, um, the guy who plays Todd, the bassist, uh, Brandon. Um, Ralph. Brandon Ralph. Uh, Ralph. 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 Yeah. He, he played Superman in 2006. And yep. I love that. That's kind of like a nod. Like, oh, he's in this comic book movie playing yeah. this ridiculous character yes. uh, <laughs> in, in this. <laughs> it's just so yeah. funny. Um, I find Nelson Franklin, the guy who plays Como, to be. Oh, so fucking funny. I had uh, I had a note about him. I had a note about him, yeah, because that, that little bit he the bit he does constantly about like, oh, you know, I like the first album better. Like he's constantly yeah, saying yeah, like, yeah. Genius <laughs> stuff, like just like very quickly. Like he, like they catch him at that party a couple of times. And yeah, his like speaking style, because he, he was on New Girl for a long time, I think. Yes. Um, and yeah, no, he's really funny. Yeah, that's yeah, Como is yeah. <laughs> that's just that's just a Como. wonderful yeah. wonderful and then there, name. Uh, and then there's two um cameos I'll bring up later that I think are fucking incredible. Um <laughs> So without further ado, I'd like to get into the awards so we can really dig into, you know, just spoil the shit out of this movie and, and like talk about what we like about it. Or for Connor, maybe some stuff you're frustrated with. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear your take because three stars and four and a half stars is a big difference. <laughs> um, let's see, Adam, we'll start with you. Go to Connor and then myself. So we'll do that. You know, Tarantino first uh, for best quote, the uh, Thomas Newman Award for best music moment, which was quite difficult. Uh, the Philip Seymour Hoffman Award for the best performance of the movie, and then finally the John Carpenter Award for the best scene. So, Adam, take it away with your Tarantino. Man, I, I didn't even know how to narrow this down. I mean, there's just so so many. I mean, the like real basic one that everyone always says is the bread. You know, like bread makes you fat. You know, like that. That's yeah. which, which yeah. is like definitely, definitely such a sweet. Uh, Sweet moment. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it's actually one of the only times where it's like it like is a genuine kind of like you know, romance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's actually I actually kind of like enjoy that bit too. And I that's that's what I'll say. I mean, before I, I guess my quote, which maybe I'm just like vamping, but like the the it's the space kind of between the fights that I relate to more than like the actual fights themselves. Because like I'm not a big like kung fu like you know like like that doesn't like totally do it for me. But um, but it's yeah, it's, it's all the kind of space between it that I actually find like pretty good. Like the music is is great. But yeah um man i so i wrote down like five and <laughs> a couple of them a couple of them are wallace and then a couple of them are kind of other people but um there's so many there's so many, many good ones i love the like the very simple scott pilgrim that just says i have to go to pee due to boredom <laughs> due to boredom yeah. uh yeah the l word one <laughs> so wallace wallace says if you want something bad you have to fight for it Step up your game, Scott. Break out the L word. Lesbian? The other L word. Lesbians? <laughs> yeah, it's a great bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah, Wallace. Uh, hey, Jimmy, do they rock or they suck? They have not started playing yet. That was a test, Jimmy, and you passed. <laughs> so Wallace stealing Jimmy at the uh, at the little Battle of the Bands thing is also a great a great bit. There. Oh, yeah. Again, Wallace? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did, you really, did you really see a future with this girl? Uh, like, with jetpacks? <laughs> <laughs> That's really, uh, that's, such a little like asshole. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Roxy, uh, who uh, is it? Mae Whitman? Is that who plays? Yes. Oh, yes. I love Mae yeah. Whitman. Yeah. yeah I, this is the one I end up going with. Your BF's about to get F'd in the B. <laughs> <laughs> She's so ridiculous. Like that character is so stupid, but but it's pretty funny because she's like is clearly going for it. Uh, May Whitman not done a ton since then. No, I know. Really frustrating. I I really really like her. I think she has a super cool look. Uh, yeah. She's one of my favorite parts of the uh, 2012 movie uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower. She's amazing in that yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so oh, <laughs> the last one I did I did put was the uh, uh, first you were a vegan and now you will be gone. <laughs> 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 so dumb. <laughs> so yeah. Good, but, yeah. Uh, so yeah, just, I'll go with the, I'll go with the uh, with the Maywood Maywood one. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a good one. Uh, yeah. Connor, what stuck out to you? Uh, I do have two. Uh, there are there's there's a lot of hilarious uh, dialogue moments in this movie. Um, I don't know what to go with here. All right, I'm gonna go with my first one just because I love the the um the cadence in which this was said. It's when. Sex bob is being introduced for the first time at the at the Bicomo, and he goes, this next band is from Toronto, and uh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's the introduction for the band. <laughs> it's like, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that so that guy that guy's not that's that guy's not Como that guy's uh what is that guy's name I looked him up too is that Como's that? at the party with the glasses the uh, oh. the guy who played. The guy who, who does the, the intros, who is very funny, he actually looks like Martin Starr. And for a yeah. second, 
I'm like, hey, is that Martin Starr? It's not though. I looked him up. I looked him up. I can't. I gotta find it. But uh, but yeah, but Como's the one at the party with the glasses that's always like talking about the like, yeah, like oh, this band's like first album was better or whatever. And he like okay. he first he, like introduces him to Ramona. He's like, oh, it's Ramona Flowers. You know, like okay, I thought know. that was the same guy. I, all these hipster dudes yeah. look the same to me. <laughs> they very much do. <laughs> Very uh, much so I had that one and I, I love that. And then the other one is when um Todd gets uh assaulted by the vegan police and um they like his this is his like third strike because like his first strike is he he ate gelato and he's like <laughs> gelato isn't vegan and Thomas Jane of all people goes, It's milk and eggs, bitch. Yes. <laughs> I had to pause because that, that caught it's me off guard. Eggs, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. So, uh, there you go. I the the script is you know the dialogue. I don't have a problem with that. Edgar Wright knows what he's doing when it comes to yeah. witty, sharp dialogue. Yeah, pointed, pointed, if you will. Yeah, re- yeah, great stuff. Um, we've alluded to it now a few times. My I chose two from the same person, Como. Uh, <laughs> it's the first time we meet him, it, and my like my favorite thing about this movie is the little black. Um, little things that tell you like what the character is or what the person is, you know, 25 years old knows everything. Uh, so Como, it's like, Oh, that's Como. He knows everyone. He must know. He must know Ramona flowers. And it goes up to him. Como 25 years old knows everyone. <laughs> and then like you hear him talking before, before Scott can actually get to him. And he says, I told him you got a really good sound. You should start marketing to deaf people. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Scott like jumps in and like, that's it. You know, it's not really it's it's there for you know if you're paying attention you know it's like rewarding people who like are, are fans of the movie and then the second one is my favorite line of the movie by far it's when they go to the uh, chaos theater or whatever at the end for the final bout between schwartzman before before g-man gideon graves uh and and scott and you hear como just right in front of the door as you walk in no no the first album is much better than the first album. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and like, I kid you not, I've met this guy. You, you know, like, yes, I have, met, yes, I have yes. met this motherfucker so many times. I've probably been this motherfucker before. <laughs> you know, like, like I've probably said something as stupid as that to sound cool for a girl or, or dudes or whatever. Like, yeah, like, I know everybody. I, I know what's like hip around Toronto. Like, but I'm also miserable. I'm like a you know self loathing prick. <laughs> like he's such a layered character with with like five lines in the movie, and he's yeah. so layered and so good. That's just a testament to to Edgar Wright uh, and Michael Bacall, you know, uh, the co writer of this screenplay. So, uh, yeah, I just love that stuff. But there there are just kind of the classic, you know, we are sex the bomb, you know, like the classic stuff. We're here to make you feel you know sad and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just, just stupid shit so uh i i love all of it it's, it's, it's fantastic stuff but the next award this is the one that i think tells the most about you the the thomas newman award the best music moment adam what do you got uh okay so it's for me it's for sure the uh clash of demon head uh Alice yeah vocals for brie larson yeah, yeah. yeah brie larson yeah allison brie <laughs> brie larson yeah uh, she should be in this too yeah oh man yeah surprisingly <laughs> she wasn't um yeah no brie larson brie larson singing yeah the uh yeah I, it's a metric song um but yeah but it's her vocals um as clash at demon head uh and that whole scene like in that club and just like him starting to figure more and more out about the world and like obviously there's like the the um Kieran Culkin like character like stealing the girlfriend and like there's you know everybody's kind of there it's like a gathering place for like all of our kind of characters we've met so far um and I think that whole scene is just is, is awesome uh so yeah that would yeah. be my music one and that song is just so good like they finally put her version on Spotify somewhat recently and it's already like by far their most popular song like it has like you know 50 something million plays and it's like way more than anything else they have that metric has so uh metric a Canadian band that's um wrote some of the songs for the movie or, or have some of the songs in the movie I don't know if they wrote them for the movie but um they have songs for the movie so yeah, that'd be my yeah. for sure. For sure. Metric fucking kicks ass. They're so good. And uh Envy Adams <laughs> for yeah. Larson's character. Envy so Adams. good. She she's she's like too good, too good in this movie. Uh I almost like chose her for my Philip Summer Hoffmore, but I was like, ah, she's not quite in it enough. But yeah. when she's there, she is it's just straight fire. Like she's just incredible. And that moment where she's singing, uh it's kind of the apex of the movie it's right in the middle of the movie where you're you're completely sucked in like you said adam it's in, you know you're it's like the, the melting pot of the movie you, you kind of know everybody at that point you get the stakes 
and it's so fun. So I, I love that part. I'll be talking about it later. Uh, Connor. Yeah. The, the song is called Black Sheep, for the, for the record. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Black Sheep, uh, performed by Metric and Brie Larson, as in the Adams. Uh, Connor, yeah. Thomas Newman Award, what do you got? Uh, I went with the uh, the opening credits song, Sex bob playing, uh, I believe Scott calls it Launchpad McQuack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a, what a great name. Yeah. I fucking love DuckTales. So right there, I was like, okay, you, touche. So I went with that. It's a great jam to just, you know, get your blood pumping for this movie. And then later on at the end, it's played with a much different tone of, you know, Scott's kicking ass now. I like that. That the, I like that song a lot. The, the, the rhythm of Launchpad McQuack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, both of those to me are the best choices, what you guys both said, because you have the intro to the movie with Allison Pill screaming, we are sex the bomb. And she kind of stops the conversation that's happening at the, at the time in the beginning of the movie. And you're, and then the opening credits are so sick. You know, you see the Scott Pilgrim kind of like yes. light up. There's so much energy. It's like a lightning bolt coming at you. Yep. So that's a great pick. Great pick by Adam. Cause you're, you're right. Kind of in the dead, dead center of the movie. So I'll, I'll, I actually wrote like both of those down to like, I was like, Oh, whichever one y'all don't choose, I'll choose the other. Uh, so I wrote both of those down, but I will go with something a little more personal. Uh, my favorite person that has a bit, in this movie, as far as the, the soundtrack goes, is is Frank Black, uh, singer of the, the Pixies, of course, uh, absolute legend. And uh, the song I Heard Ramona Sing, it's kind of our introduction to Ramona, which is, you know, we haven't really gone into her. I mean, just a brilliantly, brilliantly written character, Ramona Flowers, this kind of untouchable goddess type, you know, punk rock girl who, when you start peeling back the layers, has just as many flaws as anybody in the movie. Uh, is also kind of an asshole. So I love the way they construct her character. I love the way they kind of make her seem like this angelic, you know, person. And then as we move through the movie, uh, you know, that's just not the case. But Frank Black, the fucking man, anytime I hear his voice, I just know it right away. So I love that band so much. But, you know, you got the Black Lips. You know, something Beck is, is a big contributor. Uh, there's, you know, a broken social scene is in this. Adam, you mentioned Metric. Some incredible bands. Incredible bands. Uh, also, they paid for the rights from Jonathan Wolf for the Seinfeld uh, music in the middle yeah. of the movie. Yeah. And that's such a, that's such a funny bit. So I, I'm just There's blown a Rolling away. Stones song on it. Yeah. Yeah. Rolling Stones uh, under my thumb. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Crazy. Like crazy. I, yeah, I didn't mention the biggest band that's in the movie. Uh, <laughs> it, it's bonkers. Like all the, all the, all the bands that are in this, there's one band uh, that I learned about because of this uh, called Holy Fuck. <laughs> the band's name is Holy Fuck, and they have a song later on in the movie called Latin America. And it, yeah, I'm just like, uh, I mean, this movie opened up doors for me, and I, I'm forever grateful for that. Uh, so great, great picks, guys. I, I think y'all both nailed the two best moments. Uh, I'll, I, I scream, we are sex the bomb, like, all the time. So, <laughs> so it's a great, great, great bit. This one's also a really interesting thing. It's kind of a personality test. The, P, the Philip Seymour Hoffman Award, who like, kind of wins the movie for you. Uh, Adam, we'll start with you again. Oh man, um, I'm gonna go uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Um, there you go. I was hoping. Yeah. I hope someone did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think it it doesn't work without her. I think she has to have that like deadpan delivery, like kind of like you know, cool girl thing that like is yeah, the the, the pixie dream girl thing. Um, but also like have the emotional depth to like, Hey, like I have a past, like there's some stuff that you don't know about me, you know, like she kind of does all that pretty well. And it's one of her first roles as, as well. So, um, all these people are pretty young. I think Brie Larson was like 19 when they shot this. So it's like, um, yeah, I, I think, I think she, she does a really good job. And I've actually liked a lot of the stuff that she's done since then. I thought, I thought she was awesome on Fargo. Um, oh yeah. Three. Fargo season three. Yeah. 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 Um, where she met her, her now husband, but, uh, Ewan McGregor. So, um, yeah, I, I I would I would give it to her. I mean, there's a there's a bunch you can choose from, but I mean, you know, the movie is kind of held together by her. I think. That, yeah, that's to- that's a fair statement, Connor. You agree? Disagree? Or what you got? I just think the love story of this movie is so disingenuous, but the movie wants us to be on board with it so bad. They like the movie wants us to you know cheer when Scott like earns his self respect, and I'm like that's not the issue here. Like he's just like, he's kind of hurting people the whole time. Like this isn't about self-respect, but I don't know. That's my own. Yeah. I think, I think Mary Elizabeth Winstead's great in this. I just, I don't care for her character very much. Uh, I see. I I think, I I think 
the movie is well aware that this relationship's not going to work at the end of the movie. Like, it's yeah. like, cool, you All guys right. are going to be together, but you're about to be evil, uh, evil X number eight. Yeah, maybe I need to watch it a few more times. Maybe I'm just, I'm still just kind of picking at the surface here. Yeah, it's, it's just not. To me, it's like not a happy ending. It's very much like, oh no, god, this I, is I, toxic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is totally toxic. These people do not belong together. They've they've it's already like hurt. He, he learned a lesson. He didn't earn like the lesson, though. You know what <laughs> I mean? He's like, it's like he's not. Yeah, he he clearly is not ready for a genuine, you know, long term relationship. And maybe she, maybe she's not either. You know, but uh, but no, I, I very much view it as like, hey, let's give this a try. But like, this is yeah, this is not this is not going to last. And I actually think the the person who like kind of grows the most is Knives. You know, like yeah. who, oh, who, Knives is great. Kind, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, and also she's she's great too. She was in Glow. Um, yeah, Moore. yeah, yeah I, I thought she was really good on that show. But yeah, she's not done that much since then. But um. Yeah, I, I think she's the one who kind of goes on like the, the the biggest journey in terms of like you know obviously you know she's the youngest of like the whole crew, um, but yeah, but like has a, has a massive you know growth um, part there at the end. You know, where she's like, no, like I'm not like like I'm not going to be with this person who like rejected me and like kind of I, I you know was was terrible to me really. I mean, um, it's like good for her. Yeah, it's like she was able to see like despite being younger and like infatuated with him. Like, no, this is stupid. Like, I shouldn't be with this guy. Go be with the, go be with this other girl who you've like kind of you know already tried to get with, um, knowing that like that might not work out either. You know. Yeah. yeah, and also I know that this might just be because I've watched a lot of Woody Allen movies lately, but God. I really i I was turned off pretty quickly by the uh, the fact that he's dating a seventeen year old, like, and that that oh, isn't sure. really shown as like the 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 big deal it's it should be in the movie. Like, they were just kind of like, oh, she's you know you can't relate to her. It's like, yeah, that's that's bad too, but there's there's more to it than that. And I, I don't, it just felt a lot like Manhattan to me. Mm, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, there's some of that going on. I, I they, just, definitely, yeah, they definitely make fun of him though for it. Like, it's not like they just don't address it. I mean, they definitely like, like yeah, but I they say, like, they make fun of it, but nobody's yeah. like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Well, is that, is that illegal in Canada? I don't know. I mean, maybe that's maybe age of consent in Canada. I looked it up because I knew I was going to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> um, It's 16 in Canada. Okay. Ooh, okay. So that yeah. doesn't Ooh. make it right at all oh no 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 that's i'm just still saying, just like I'm saying, yeah is there, is there maybe like we we're, we're carrying this like american thing into it that's like oh my god like that's, that's outrageous you know like where it's like, illegal yeah is it actually is it actually you know illegal in a, in a, well and there's plenty of cultures where that's like that people get married at that age you know from they're 25 i mean austin our grandmother got married she was 14 and, and her husband was 24 you know so it's like yeah that's, that's uh you know it's like i mean obviously that's, that's crazy but it's like but yeah it happens so so yeah, that's I, like, yeah no, I definitely think it's like it's a little under addressed for sure but i i don't i don't think it's like uh yeah, an issue like that, like that, like ruins the movie for me because because I think they, they are making fun of him the entire time. It's not like oh how cool he's dating a seventeen year old, you know. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's yeah, like uh, a Wallace Kieran Culkin is just like, dude, <laughs> you need to break up with her, like yeah, over yeah. over and over. Uh, and Allison Pill, she just like literally like I like y- like I want to shoot your life, <laughs> like I want to like take your world and like blow it up. Speaking of uh, so annoying, Allison Pill. Did either of y'all watch Devs? No. Oh man, she's so good in that show, the Alex Garland show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're neither of us are big, uh, big TV guys. Uh, you know, we both great. seen a fair, we both seen a fair amount, but I, yeah, I'm not great with. Re- I know what the show is. I've heard it's kind of up my alley, but I just haven't just haven't haven't gone down that road. Uh, but I do like do like Allison Pill. <laughs> uh well, all that said, I'm glad I was able to get that up. But um, I did give this to Kieran Culkin. Me too. Yeah, very fair. Yeah. I'd be too. Every almost every time. I love it. Yeah. Um, he's hilarious. Wall- Wallace is the he's the funniest character of the whole movie. Yeah. Well, I like that he's not, you know, he's not the token gay friend who's like a stereotype. He's an actual like character with his own, you know, his own thing going on who just steps in to tell people when they're fucking up. I love that yeah. kind of character. I love that that trope of the friend who's just like there to remind you when you're making a mistake. Yeah, he's a great roommate too. He's like <laughs> He's like, fuck you, you know, like you're you're doing the wrong thing. This is not going to work. So, uh, you're kind of making fun of Scott, but also rightly yeah. so. So, yeah, uh, I, 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 and Karen Cole can his timing, his tone, like everything is just fucking money. He's he's the most perfectly cast person in the in this movie for me. Along along with uh, Winstead, I think Winstead is Ramona is like, I mean, a match made in heaven. Uh, but I do think there are some people you could kind of like give and take. I just I don't see anybody but Kieran doing doing the job of wallace you know justice uh he yeah he's, yeah. he's lights out yeah i agree 
was one of the few characters in this movie that didn't make me just be like, ugh, constantly. <laughs> I love when he like has multi- like more and more guys in his bed. <laughs> like, over, yeah. over the course of the movie, he's got like three dudes in his bed. You know, uh, well, I love his he, seduction he's a technique. Fucking, his seduction yeah, he's a technique is just like, hey, you, come here. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's yeah. fucking great. <laughs> so just a total baller. Yeah, just a pimp. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, his his obsession with Chris Evans' character too is is, is so funny. I mean, he's like stalking him and like has coffee for him and stuff. It's just yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think hilarious. we talked enough about Chris Evans in this. He's so funny in this. Like like the <laughs> Lucas Lee is like a ridiculous character. Um, I mean, I, I, he didn't like win the movie for me, but um, but no, I love like his introduction too. Like when he cracks his neck to like the Universal <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so good he, he's on the phone at that one point like in that like kind of the, the like movie scenery like he's like you listen good and you listen hard but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah his eyebrows just uh... i love when, he's, I love like, when he... coming, he's coming out of his Go trailer ahead. and he's like rehearsing his lines and then all of a sudden he's like hey i'm talking to you scott pilgrim and like yeah. like <laughs> Yeah, so it worked out. I, I, yeah, yeah, I love I love when uh, Scott challenges him to do the grind, and he's like, "Do one of those thingies," and he's like, "It's called grind, bro." Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "We'll do a grindy thingy on that rail," and he's like, "Someone give me my board." <laughs> <laughs> he, and then when he's like, yeah, "It's actually kind of hilarious," <laughs> so he's so good, and uh, Mr. Lee, <laughs> and he's like beat up all of his. I'm nothing without my stunt team. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that scene is fantastic uh yeah so he's he's great Every, everyone's good anna kendrick is really good uh yes. Yes. underrated you know the, the sister who's just like uh you know always gets the kind of the the gossip from from wallace i love that scene when wallace is like passed out and she he and scott's like how'd you know that and wallace has his phone out <laughs> and somehow he has texted you know this stuff this stuff to the sister and he's like not awake i, I love that gag i think it's brilliant I love the gags of, you know, like Michael Sarah going into one room and coming out a second later com- dressed completely different. Yeah. yeah. I, I love I love all that stuff. Me too. Me too. I uh, yeah, good, for one of my shit. quotes, for one of my quotes, I nearly went with Anna Kendrick when she's consoling Scott after uh, Ramona broke up with him. And, he, and she's like, hey, you know, maybe next time we don't date the girl with seven evil ex-boyfriends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then she just leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Or the the bit where the Aubrey Plaza like chunk when she's working at the coffee shop and it keeps ble- ble- bleeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scott's like, stop doing that with your mouth. <laughs> I'll do whatever the boop I want to do with my mouth. That that's definitely uh, funnier now, like knowing Aubrey Plaza. You know what I mean? Like, yes. like than yes. it was like in the moment. Because I think in the moment it was just kind of like, oh, what, what, whatever. Like, what is this? Like, you don't really get it. But yeah, now that we kind of like have like a history with her, it's like that's hilarious. That like, yeah, that she's the one in that. Um, yeah. Also, I, we we didn't really talk much about the theater experience when we first saw it because it was like uh, there was like no expectation we just kind of like oh let's, we was like let's go see a movie we just like picked a random movie um there wasn't like this excitement for it you know and i think like where we saw it i mean that you know played a role we were you know on Times square in, in the middle of manhattan it's like there it was like the theater was just, like up for it so it made me think like oh this is gonna be like really well um and then it didn't um but i think where we saw it everyone was kind of up for it and i like, kind of got like was in on it and i think the opening it just like hit you in the face with, like the the music and everything it's like the, the 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 credits and it's just like oh man here we go like this is just like its own yeah little world here like what am i watching because i think like our dad is like a is like a relatively like you know like he watches a lot of movies but like it's he's a relatively like um straightforward movie watcher like i think he was like i don't really get it you know like like he didn't yeah he, like he didn't get the the bits and the you know i mean the seinfeld thing sure but like you know the video game aspect of it which is funny because like i'm not a big gamer either you know like that's that's, that's me funny. neither yeah, yeah. Like, but but i do i do like it in this movie but um, coins yeah but yeah but no, i think that was that was part of the reason you know i think i think we we enjoyed it too is like that very first time you see it was this really fun experience so um that does kind of carry some weight yeah i yeah I mean, that's a great point i think connor and i had this similar experience when we went to los angeles together and we saw licorice pizza uh like when it was initially like premiering that week in december like mid-december uh just in a few cities around the country and we were in la and this theater has you know 150 people seeing the new pta movie and we both were just kind of like, oh, maybe movies aren't dead. It's like, yeah, well, we're, you know, we're in L.A. You know, we're you like you forget. L.A. and New York are just the Mecca. There's the Mecca of pop culture as far as the United States goes. And yeah. you go back to your, you know, your San Antonio or San Marcos or whatever in, in Texas. And you're just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, these movies don't get shown here, you know, um, so you have to get lucky. And 
that's that's one of the cool parts of traveling one of the cool parts of going to massive cities is being with people who give a shit about the stuff you give a shit about so new york definitely was why that movie was like sold out <laughs> when we saw it and and we had like you and i had such a blast you know i don't really i don't really know jeremy's fandom for this movie i don't really know if he likes it or loves it or, or what i don't really talk to him about it well I, I can guarantee you he either really really loves it or thinks it's like the worst movie ever made so uh. yeah he typically <laughs> yes no he's not really a middle man he's a yeah. he's typically a, typically a hater or a total advocate so you're, you're right <laughs> that's hilarious so for for psh connor and i both went colkin adam you went winstead uh the john carpenter award for the best scene of the movie this is a lot of fun there's so many moments you know there's literally like five different epic battles throughout the movie but also the space between the notes like adam said kind of a kind of the point a to point b stuff is really good so what'd you go with adam so i mean i feel like it's 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 kind of cheap to choose the same thing i chose like the music moment but that entire scene probably is my favorite scene in the movie um like i said it's the meeting place for, of, of all of our people but if i had to kind of go with the second one i would say the like the introduction of kind of going up those stairs and like seeing the set of where the 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 lucas lee like film is being set and then that whole yeah. bit there um, would probably be my next pick i know there's both things that we have like talked about already but um i, I yeah those two are the ones that kind of stand out the most to me because it's like i like the kind of like the like kind of hyper realism of like when they're going up the stairs and like there's like those doors and like it, you know everything kind of fades around them it's just like the stairs and you know i'm not a com- I, i've never read a comic book in my life you know like I, like I do not, I've like never read comic books. It's not even like a, it's just not a thing I've done. So this, and the people have said like, this is what it's like, you know, reading comic, you're hitting the face, you have the split screens, you have like the panels and all that stuff. And there's those little black, you know, bits in between the scenes that are like the turning of a page. Um, I, I'm, I'm surprised after this, I wasn't like, oh, I should like check out some comics, you know, like, uh, because I, I really like visually like related to it. So um, I think that that scene of like the kind of yeah, the going up the stairs, seeing the Lucas Lee thing, his whole bit, and how ridiculous he is ending with the, the grind where he, you know, is, is finally defeated um not finally i mean he's kind of yeah. you know, he's the master of his own demise there but uh but yeah that that was that was the uh my kind of second choice if i can't go with the the same thing as my music moment which was the the uh clash of demon head show at the at the i can't remember the name of the theater they're at but yeah that, that theater. i can't remember that one I, the yeah. chaos theater is the one that sticks out to me yeah but... yeah 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 but that, no that, that is that is both of those are great moments um I, yeah chris evans just again like we just mentioned just lights out the, the the real comic booky moment with that one is when he's going from like rail to rail like, boom, it's like yeah. so so aggressive <laughs> and scott they keep going over to scott and he's like whoa yeah whoa <laughs> the until coins finally, are going higher and higher yeah 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 until he finally yeah you see the coins go up and it's like four thousand you know <laughs> like, uh that's hilarious uh connor what'd you choose i went with the battle against the katanagi twins yeah that's a good that's one that's a, a good one. great great bit you know, I love a good battle of the bands, and I thought that, that bit reminded me so much. Have you guys ever seen the movie Kung Fu Hustle? Yeah, yeah. No. It's such it's such a wacky. It's like a Looney Tunes Kung Fu movie, uh, made from uh, Stephen Chow, a great uh, Chinese filmmaker, who did this one scene where like these guys, these assassins with uh, this big like sitar, are like blasting like arrows from it and it's like a music fight and this reminded me so much of that because i love that sequence and i love the dragons versus the the gorilla it's the first for me it's the first time where you really see sex babam as like a rock band with something to say mm. yeah yeah and i love that as well it's a like fully confident. moment hmm? yeah they're like fully confident too for like the first yeah. time yeah exactly yeah. yeah like scott is like pissed and yeah. he says you know when he's in a bad mood he plays better uh, so yeah, that whole sequence was really cool. Yeah, that that is a great bit. That that's a good point. I think that's like Michael Sarah's strongest moment of the movie is when uh, Mark Weber, uh, his character is kind of like fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, what are we gonna do? You know, like look at look at those speakers. And uh, Scott's like, that's all right. Like, you, you just gotta get out there and play the show. Pre show jitters. <laughs> you know, he's just amped up, uh, re- ready to play. And yeah, I've, I've always thought that's like a visually stunning moment of the movie. Like the, the dragons come out from the twins and all that all that jazz is, is really cool kind of implements for the first time implements you know different parts of asian culture so i love that you shouted that out connor that's a it's a, it's a great bit all the battles are great <laughs> like, yeah. uh, as well as the moments in between so we've talked about this the most the todd battle the the base battle but we haven't mentioned some of my favorite moments of it uh, of course when you know todd is like beating the shit out of scott 
and he's like going through walls and stuff. My favorite like shot of the entire movie is when uh, you hear do 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 do, and the D's start flying out, like starting yeah. flying out, like like three D style. And Todd's like base battle, <laughs> you know. So, and so they start playing base against each other, and like the stuff Todd is doing is so fucking sick. Like do 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 do, he's like all over the place. And Scott's like not as good of a player, you know. He's just not as like he's not up to it. But uh, the whole vegan bit with Thomas Jane and fucking Clifton Collins, <laughs> like, what, what are these guys <laughs> doing in this movie? They're uncredited. Did, they, apparently, they didn't get paid for it. They're just like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how tr- I don't know how true that is, but you know, like the vegan police, it, it's such an incredible stretch of the movie. So we've alluded to it, but I, I just want to I just want to make it clear that that is to me one of, one of the like most insane, ridiculous stretches of any movie I've ever seen but it's done so well. Uh, so that DDD boom, boom, boom has always stuck out to me. And, um, you know, also there's like a soft spot I have for bass players because Adam, our brother, Jeremy is a, is like an incredible bass player and they always get like, they like, don't get the fairest end of the deal, you know, ever. They're always just kind of like that guy. So the fact that this movie is called Scott Pilgrim versus the world and is based around the bassist for this band is like really neat. I love that that, the base has its moment when it's the Todd versus first Scott battle and the, the whole vegan thing. God damn. And I don't know if we mentioned the, I think we mentioned some of the lines, but when they're sitting on the couches, like when Envy Adams is like, all right, y'all can come back for like VIP or whatever. And they're like sitting on the couches back and forth. And Todd's like, Ramona, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, t- the tension in the room is, is like incredible. And you're like looking at when there's like the wide shot of all of them in the room. You're like, look at this cast. Like, this is so cool. All these yes. people in the same room kind of doing this thing. So yeah, we, we've alluded to a lot of these these moments, but I could not shy away from this being my favorite stretch of the movie, uh, along with the intro of We Are Sex with Bomb and uh, this kind of the, this, the talent from Edgar Wright as a director. But also, Jason Schwartzman battle, pretty badass. Uh, you know, can't, yeah, can't, complain yeah. to, can't complain about the ending either. You know, also the, the, the that, that scene is great. Yeah, that, that one like shower you see them with the two couches and you can kind of see yeah. one is great. And and they're they're very much like the the, the members of like Clash of Demon Head are like they're trying to do like oh we're, this is like how rock stars like supposed to act. You know, like like they clearly are like putting on such a front to like be like oh like we're at this level now. So like we we act like this, and it's like that's such a funny thing to comment on too. You know, it's like that's what kind of young people. I mean, Jeremy has told us stories about like a band he's played in where it's like. These people actually like had some talent, but they just like, oh, like we're gonna act like idiots because like that's what we're supposed to do as like musicians and stuff like that. It's like, no, you don't, you don't have to, like you know, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like you don't have to do that. Like it's it's gonna be okay if you don't. So um, I like that they kind of comment on that too. There's a lot of like biting things like about different you know types of people and stereotypes and stuff like that. I will say the one battle that I, I did not like the very first one um, is Matthew Patel. I think is the guy's name. Yeah, um, it's the only one that I'm like like. It maybe veers away from the like because I, I do think the the I can't remember their name the uh, the Japanese twins um, uh, that is like almost like a, like a oh they were like paying homage to like this like culture and like you know like the the like the DJ culture and like Japanese culture and stuff like that it feels a little the, that first one I'm like oh this is like definitely a little like a little over the top in terms of like the kind of the stereotyping and like just kind of like the way the guy like talks and like I, I don't know like there there was something um, that was the only that was the only part of the movie that I thought was like. Well, and, and like there's there's a couple words maybe used that I'm like, oh, that like wouldn't be used today, you know, like uh, here in 2023, 13 years later. There's a couple of times where I thought that, but that that first battle was like the only, the only battle where I was like, eh, this is just kind of feels like it's a little over the top, you know, um, in terms of kind of like the stereotyping. But other than that, I actually thought like all of it was like pretty just like funny and, you know, well done. But yeah, that, I'd say that's fair. The only thing that I love about that bit is, of course, Wallace is amazing during that first bit. He's like, <laughs> when he goes, Scott, fight. <laughs> It's yeah. Like, also, when when Scott says, "Wait, we're fighting over Ramona," and Matt Matt Patel goes, "Didn't you get my email?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, the email is so funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The email is hilarious because because Michael Sarah's reading over and he's like, "This is boring." Yeah. <laughs> so, but but I, I think you're right. I think it is the weakest battle of, of like all of them. Um, so you have like one, you have one, two, three, four, uh, then five and six are kind of put together with the twins, and then and then battle number seven versus jason schwartzman so uh gideon graves such a great name uh we don't really i, I don't know g-man is such a such a funny idea you know i think this yeah, this yeah. indie this indie rock god who's like yeah I, you know and he like he calls them like the, the wrong names but great stuff uh anything else you guys want to say about kind of uh stretches of the movie that you love uh 
Well, I just killed a spider, so just wanted to <laughs> announce that. Um, Congrats. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, what, what kind of spider? What, what, what the hell? A little one that was too close to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do love all the random, you know, moments of reality in this movie where like towards yeah. the end uh, when uh, Scott picks the fight with Gideon and Gideon's like, you want to fight me for her? And Scott's like, is that not clear? And he, put, he asked over to Cespa bomb. Is that not clear? <laughs> it just, I love little shit like that. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot to like here. Um, for me, it's just the characters are too despicable to root for at times. And that just, for me, considering that, like how heroic Scott is supposed to be portrayed, I guess, or like the movie's trying to make, make us like see him. I just, I, I would have hoped for a little bit more redeemable qualities. Just a couple more. That's fair. I, I understand where you're coming from. I definitely, obviously Adam and I kind of see it as a, he's like a hero slash villain in the movie. And we love that. We, we, we both kind of like love a bunch of shitty characters like this, like, like dazed and confused, just like a bunch of dickheads, you know, they're yeah. just like, I'm better than you and I'm young and I'm awesome. And, and I, I love that stuff. But at the same time, when you, you, you put these people in a comic book, you know, video gamey style, we are used to someone being somewhat redeemable and making the right decisions. Well, you need, you know, it's the archetypes exist for a reason. Like the, you know, the hero's journey. Yeah. It's, it's, it's cool if the hero's a dick, but not if he's not trying to be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Deadpool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like if he's, if he's a dick by accident, if he's not aware that he's hurting people, then it's like, why am I excited that you're going to win this movie? So I think I think that's where where, where we have the, the biggest difference. I actually don't think the movie is portraying him as a hero. Like I I, I that's not my read on it. Like I don't I I think um, I think if it was, I would totally agree with you because it's like what like this guy sucks. You know, I actually think I think it is making fun of him. It is saying I hope I, I maybe maybe I hope that it's saying he's he's ridiculous. Like like this is a child basically. You know, like I don't view him as like this like star. He's not Captain America, right? Like he's not like this like man like someone somebody to rally around like i actually i don't think the movie's even trying to make it that uh, i think that's why i like this like way more than like any marvel movie because it's like i i i just don't like i i buck against the like the hero's journey thing i think that's why i like this movie because it's not a typical hero's journey thing there's so many stories like that that i'm just like okay like another one you know what i mean it's like the guy wins in the end you know like they like save the world you know it's like i like that this is such a small world you know like like the the, the stakes like aren't like I'm, I'm really like I can't watch another movie where just like New York gets bombed or like you know like it's just or like something you know, <laughs> like an entire country decimated because of the you know this one evil thing. I I can't I can't like my mind just doesn't like it. It just, it just bucks against it. Whereas this it's like it's like kind of flipping that you know it's like and that's why I think I like it um, because it's almost like it's clearly not. Make, I, I think it clearly enjoys like and like the writers clearly enjoy like um, comic books and, and comic book her heroes and superheroes and things like that. But I do think it is it is poking at it too. Like I think that's that's one of the reasons I like it is because it's kind of like poking at all of those things. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason Brandon Routh got got cast. Yes, it's, it's yes. like it's like a bit of like a jab at like oh yeah here's your Superman now he's just like this dick you know bassist you know it's like um, I I like that it's like yeah then the title Scott Pilgrim versus the world but in reality it's just like this very small like um, neighborhood in Toronto you know it's like that that yeah. I like but it seems like the world to them. There's never there's never a moment in this movie where like the news is on and it's like in Toronto Scott Pilgrim you know, takes on this super powered guy or whatever you know it's it it's fake you know it knows it, it's no, it knows it's not based in reality you know and and my favorite thing about it is it just plops you in there's no there's no origin there's no 100%, like hundred percent this is 100%. this is why this guy can do this I I like love that about it while also. Also, I'm obviously very much in the middle of you guys where I do I do enjoy a hero's journey. I do enjoy a guy who makes the right decision, even if it's hard. That's why I loved, 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 loved Matt Reeves, the Batman, so much. Is because you can see him like, oh, fuck. Like, I know this is probably the right thing to do. But also, is that, you know, there's all these, these branches of these decisions that I have to make. And it, it was like such a fucking good movie. So well done. And I love the way they treated that Batman character. So. I'm kind of in the middle where it, it can work for me either way. I just want the movie to be well done. I want to have a good time and I, I want to be entertained. But uh, Connor, I know, I, I know you, you, you stand by uh, the stuff that you love that like you're, those are your darlings. Well, 
I also just, I think that, you know, the talent of Edgar Wright's writing and his directing is that Adam and I are both right and both wrong. Yeah. We can can see different, completely different things in this movie. I think that, you know, that's cool. I love the, uh, the uh, objectivity of that. Yeah. It's, it is divisive, you know, while, well, like a, you know, uh, uh, what did I say? Uh, 7.59 DB, 82% Rotten Tomatoes, 3.9 a letterbox. You get a letterbox, there's some motherfuckers who are tearing this thing to shreds. And, for sure. For you know, sure. Connor, Connor is not doing that. You know, there are people who give it one star and are like, what are you, 15? You know, like, just like, eh, whatever. So I'm going to give you that I, with our next segment. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't wait. wait. I can't wait. Yeah. 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 So with, with, with that being said, I think we should take a little break and then we'll get into what's in the box. All right, fellas, let's uh, see what's in the box on old letterboxed. I've got four. Got three, three kind of positive uh, mi- mini reviews and, and one, one pretty funny negative one. <laughs> uh, I'll start with a, a, a three and a half star one. Benjamin Rosser. Love this guy. I've been following him for, for a long time. Uh, I think this is, this is my favorite thing that I read <laughs> on it. Imagine being a hot girl born between Michael Sarah and Jason Schwartzman. Toronto must be like the promised land for mid straight men. <laughs> so three, three and a half stars. Yeah, so so That's good. I, I never thought about it that way. Like, yeah, oh, no, yeah. Twins, yeah. she's gorgeous. Like, she's beautiful. She's like such a unique, you know, individual. Yeah. Awesome. Obviously, the hair is really cool. It's Michael Sarah and Jason Schwartzman, these two like dweeby, dweeby guys. <laughs> And Jason Schwartzman's the cool one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Fuck. Yeah. Well, no, and he, and he's, dated, he's dated Brie Larson, who's like, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. The fact that Envy Adams is still like hot on Michael Sarah's tail is like, yeah. what? <laughs> it's outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Benjamin Rosser. If you don't follow Benjamin Rosser on Letterboxd, give, give, give it a whirl. Uh, great stuff. Always, always makes me laugh. Uh, next one is a five is a five star review from Rio. Very simple. How did Scott manage to pull that many hoes? <laughs> That's a very good question. Five stars. Yeah. The whole movie I was asking that's like, what is why? <laughs> what does he have? Yeah. <laughs> His opener to to Ramona is like fucking up a Pac-Man trivia bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah that's yeah that whole bit's fine i i also love I, I, one of my favorite things about letterbox is just it, is you can see people's personality through it right so like imagining scott pilgrim michael sarah being like look at all my hosts it's, it's like such a funny kind of you know uh like combination of, of different like different dialects right it's like you know, scott pilgrim would never say that but it's funny to imagine him saying it. And I think that's why I love his, uh, his bit in uh, This is the End from 2013. Michael I was Sarah, just about to like, bring that up. Yeah, oh, so good. Like, what, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, he's just like a misogynistic prick in that, in that movie. <laughs> I watched that movie like three weeks ago. Man, it's so good. I, I forgot how good that was. Yeah. It, it, it's fucking hilarious, especially like the first hour or so. Uh, great stuff. Um. One more positive one, and then we'll get to, we'll get to the really funny negative one. Uh, this is from Minick. I, I don't know how you properly say it. It's M I N I C K. I'm not really sure, but I, again, someone I've been following for a while. And uh, I also this is the one I agreed with the most, where I was like, I didn't really think about that, but now that you say it, I, I'm, I'm all in. Four and a half star review here. Where can I get one of those cardboard cutouts of Brie Larson as Indy Adams? <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. at, the, at the video store, or at the music store, yeah. uh, there's literally a you know cardboard cutout of, of Brie Larson, and it's fucking sick. Like I would totally, totally buy that for whatever you know forty bucks. I would. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I would put that up in my like apartment wherever I end up. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> yeah. that, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, in the end, it had the, the name of the band too, like on it or something. Yeah, Clash of Demon Head. That'd be so cool. That's that's a t-shirt I need I need to look into buying is is yeah. a Clash of the Demon Head uh t-shirt. So I thought that was great. Now here's here's, now. here's here's where we're gonna get some conversation. Uh this is a very negative review from Amari. Amari is you know, I follow a shit ton of people on Letterboxd. Amari is someone that I don't agree with a lot of the time, but always 
just makes me like either kind of laugh at why people don't like movies or or challenge myself you know to kind of re you know uh what's the word kind of revalidate why i do like something amari says i only watched a quarter of this a quarter of this movie because i'm not an incel or 14 years old but um yeah god bless y'all who gassed this shit up please go get laid one star <laughs> No, yeah, I read a few like that. I read a few like that. I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you pulled one just like that because I think. I think. Yeah, that says so much that 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 review about both the the reviewer and I think the movie and how you can take this movie if you. Yeah, you you can read into it if you want to. If you want to read into that type of 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 uh, viewing, I think it's there, and I think that's that's like a totally fair you know reading of it. Um, I disagree with it obviously completely. Um, but but yeah, I, I saw a few reviews like that and a lot of a lot of um. Oh, Edgar Wright I can't write women. You know, a lot of that, a lot, yeah, a lot of incel, a lot of incel stuff. And it's like, man, like, I like, I, I think, I think people kind of like want that to be true. It's like, they, it's like they want, they want that to be the case. Like, like, I can just say, oh, this thing that's like kind of like, it's like very obviously silly. Like, like obviously, this movie is like not a serious movie. <laughs> like, like th- this is not trying to tell some like grand story about like you know the 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 uh, North American male. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 a ridiculous you know, comic book tale um, set in the perspective of, of, of an idiot. Like he is an idiot. Like, like there's no doubt about that. Like, I, I really don't think we're, we're supposed to watch this movie and think, wow, what a, what a wonderful man, you know, uh, Scott. Yeah. It's like, that's just like, obviously not true. Like, I, I, so if that's your reading and, and the, I, the, the tone of a lot of the, the negativity around um, some of the reviews that I read were like a lot of that kind of like get laid, like kid, you know, like, it's like, okay, man, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like that guy like who is like like who do, or who are you like this like gatekeeper supreme that like gets to get to be like oh this is too young for me it's like it, it's it's the, it's the same person that's like you still watch animated movies like I, I just don't like that whole tone of like oh this thing that's like kind of like the movie is about young people like it's not about someone who's 40 it's not about someone who's 50 years old like it's about kids who are you know from the ages of what 17 to 24 like I, I don't know. I just think like that whole like tone I read in some of the reviews was like, was like very annoying. It's like, man, like if that's how you read into this movie, like there, there's stuff dumber than this. So like, I, I mean, I don't even want to know what you think about that. Or um, I, I, I read a lot of that and like the incel stuff. And yeah, I think if you, if you were the type of person who's like Scott Pilgrim is my hero, it's like, Oh, that, there's some, there's some problematic that's stuff. Weird. Yeah. It's yeah, so like that. There, yeah. You've got some, you might have some stuff that you need to kind of address. Um, but I, just, I really don't, I just don't think that's, and maybe, maybe that's, you might think he's the hero if you saw this movie for the first time when you were 13, but if you're, if you're watching this, I'm 32 years old. If I watched this as a 32 year old and I thought, man, I want to be Scott Pilgrim, I'd have massive issues, right? Like, but, but, <laughs> yeah. if, but if I'm watching this, if I'm watching this at 32 thinking, man, what a child, this kid, this kid is a child. Like he needs to grow up. He, he learned some lessons along the way. Like what a funny, you know, like story, like, and then leave it at that. Like, that's fine. I, I don't know. I, there, there's some of the things that I read that I was just like, what? Like, how did you get that from this movie? Like, I, I just think like that is just uh, that's just strange. But but no, I mean, you know, more power to him. It's like that's that's this dude's opinion. But um, but yeah, a lot of the incel stuff and the like Edgar Wright can't write women, which I have a theory. I think that's why uh, he was so gung ho about making Last Night in Soho, because I think he, really, he wanted to prove. Um, no, I can write. I can write. I can write, you know, a woman's story. Um, and that, that to me is his least successful movie. And it's like it's OK to write what you know, like. We don't need yeah. to all be able to write from every different perspective. And I actually think that that criticism is a little bit weird that like, uh, like, like we don't really do that with, you know, like, like, I, I mean, no reference, a bad example, because she's right. She writes just amazing characters for you know, regardless of the, of the gender. But like, I don't know, like we don't do that with, with some, some writers where you say like, oh, like they can't write, they can't write for like another race. So like, you know, they can't write. It's like, no, like they're, they're writing from their perspective. Like it's their perspective. Like, I, I like that's okay. That like that, that's per- perspective might be a little bit limited. You know, I, that's okay. Like not every person has this like, yeah. and, you know, um, perspective that can write about every different type of uh, topic or person. So I don't know that, that criticism rang a little hollow to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Connor, what do you think? I think Adam's right. Um, I do find it weird when people write reviews targeting not the film, but the people who are watching it. Mm. Like, why Why are you just trying to be an asshole? There's ways to, t- to tell people you didn't like a movie without just attacking something that somebody likes. You know, let people enjoy things. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and also, how, how far did they say they got into the movie? A quarter. Yeah, see, fuck them. Their opinion is not valid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I agree with you. I think you do have to see the whole the whole film. But, I uh, think for every movie, if you're going to talk about it, watch the whole thing. 
yeah that's the that's the first red flag is yeah i only watched a quarter of this movie bam stop stop right there yeah there are some movies <laughs> yeah. that i did not make it all the way through i don't bring them up in conversation because i have nothing to say precisely so like austin we should reply to that or we should all three reply to this guy and be like oh i only read a quarter of your review but like, here's my take you know it's like <laughs> like, it's like what, what a ridiculous thing it's like oh i watched a quarter of this like get laid bro it's like oh come on like like what? Like what a weird response. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, slow yeah. down, Andrew Tate. We w- go watch something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's that this alpha male vibes screaming yes. off this thing. I'm like, yes. come on, dude. Yes. Well, when, I'm, when, I'm when, glad, when what's funny is that there, there are people who actually probably you know genuinely like uh, like him. Um, I don't. I don't even want to say his name that like would would love this movie if you read it a certain way, right? Like it's like if yeah. So it's like man, that's such a funny like little circle that you can kind of go in if you really want to. Um, which is, I, yeah, it's, it's a mark of like good writing. It's like, it makes you think about things and talk, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But always in a, you know, a, a respectful way. That's what I always want to encourage with this stuff. Cause there's sure. movies I fucking despise that Austin loves, but I've never gone after him personally for liking the movie, but I will eviscerate yeah. Terrence Malick for making it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, I think you're right, yeah. Connor. You, 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 the point about like, yeah, people who attack like, Oh, you like this, you must be like this. It's like, man, I like, like therefore like this is you know you're like it's like we're it's like we're all in high school still and it's like oh you play basketball you're just a jock you know oh you're in the band you're just like a geek you know it's like man okay people can contain multitudes like it is okay for people to have different interests like austin you said this movie on paper is not up my alley at all like at all but i love it it's like that's okay that's okay that like the you know the next movie on this list like if this if we would have expanded this this like list that we made you know to all the 2000s the very next movie on this list might have been like the damned united for me you know what i mean it's like those are vastly vastly different movies but it's okay to like different things you know it's like you don't have to just be like oh you're into that like it's the same it's the same as like oh you still play video games it's like man like yeah. okay like gatekeep much you know like I, like, <laughs> geez, like well and it's know. okay to just let people talk about what they like and you know let them you know like i don't know anything about soccer but I know that you guys like are really into that stuff. So, you know, when you guys are talking about it or like you're bringing up some soccer stats with me, I'll just be like, you know, cool, man. That's awesome. But not be like, you know, stop talking to me about that. I don't fucking care. Like I would never do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's yeah. called just being a respectful human being for God's sake. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Connor, you're a decent man. It's like, yeah. And novel. I'm doing the bare minimum over here too. It's like, <laughs> that's the craziest thing. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I picked this review. This is great. What, what a concept. <laughs> Empathy, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, or, yeah, or or just like what happened to just like turning the other way, you know, like just yeah. you know. This is know. not for yeah. me, so I will just not watch it again and go find something that is for me. That's also yeah, an option. I want, I want to be clear. I want to be clear. Like obviously, like if someone watched the entire movie and had like a really negative review about it, like fair enough, you know. But I think if the review is like, I watched a quarter of this, get laid, bro. It's like okay, like okay, like put like get like some like level of thought or like nuance into this. Like it's like that's just okay. Like you know, fair enough, but um because yeah because like n- now what's stopping me from just like judging you as a person who just like only judges things after a quarter of the way through it's like it's like oh yeah like you know started this thing only got a quarter way through it here's my take you know it's like oh okay well that dude must know. only speed date yeah like he, that's it like he gets 10 seconds and he's like done no next yeah <laughs> never gets beyond the third date yeah oh. i don't know <laughs> yeah one of my favorite lines from from connor uh that has happened on many times in this this podcast is like, you must be a hit at the parties, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just, yeah. But you know, yeah. you, you, it is a 3.9 on Letterboxd. Most of the reviews are positive, are fun, but there's about 5,000 people out there who are just like, you know, like fuck this thing, you know, I, ah, and here's why <laughs> it's like, fine, whatever. I mean, I guess that's what the, that's what the fucking yeah, website's that's okay. for. Yeah. That's great. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I don't mind <laughs> just, that at all. It's it's just silly. And that's why I love this segment is you can get such like a personalized take from different people, whether they're negative or positive about it. So <laughs> this this is a great turnout. <laughs> One star from Amari. Shout out, shout out Amari. This is uh, maybe your only time uh, on on the podcast, but uh, you know, un- unless we watch a movie where you you hate again, and I, I choose you for another review. <laughs> if they reviewed a lot, I have a feeling we will see them again. Yeah, you never know. I, I follow so many people. I'm gonna try to choose different, um, different uh, like users, different uh, profiles and whatnot. And I, I, the the one that 
I like always read what they do is Benjamin Ross or the first one I wrote, which was imagine being a hot girl torn between Michael Sarah and Jason Schwartzman. So that's the one I really wanted to, you know, shine a light on. And uh, I think people, if you do have letterbox, you should follow also. That's a good way to uh, get up on out of here. Segue into the, the ending of this thing. Uh, it's been a blast guys. And I'm super stoked to continue this project. You know, uh, that's now one movie done out of 23. <laughs> So we're going to keep keep going at it. Next week, uh, Connor and I are going to be, be returning for uh, Ready Player One, which was number 10 on Connor's list. And then we'll do a number 10 from my list and so on and so forth. So uh, expect Adam to be on a lot of these, not all of them, but a lot of them. And expect Connor and I to show up damn near every time. This is uh, going to be really cool. So I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, thank you all for listening. If you like what we do, feel free to follow us on social media. Of course, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, Film Guys and Productions. Uh, the easiest way to follow us on Letterboxd is find Connor95. Uh, if you go to his um, the people that he follows, you can literally find everyone that contributes to, to Filmgasm. Uh, check out filmgasm.com for trailers, uh, old reviews that Connor has up from like dating back to 2014, uh, all kinds of interesting stuff. It's kind of a time capsule at this point. <laughs> Damn near uh, a decade. How about that? It, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Crazy, Adam. You should see Adam like, what Connor has to say about Interstellar, like in 2014. It's, it's, it's I took awesome. all those reviews and put them on Letterbox, so they're all oh. on there. Oh, that's so cool. Check that's those cool. There all you out. go. That's right, Connor. That took you like days to like. That took me about three to four days to do that. My hands <laughs> fucking hurt, man. There is a moment. There is a Thumbs. moment. Anyone, anyone who's listening to this who has Letterbox understands this moment where you decide: Am I going to really do this, or am I just going to like do this? You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah I'm going to really do this. Like, like, am I going to log everything I've ever seen, or am I just going to be like, oh, I just casually use Letterbox? I think most people who have the mindset of someone who would use Letterbox are probably the one that are going to want to really dive in. So, uh, which I think is the three of us. So, um, I remember, yeah, Austin. Once I told you about it, you were just kind of like, ah, you're like reluctant, like. If I get yeah. off, I'm just going to want to like do everything as a like, yeah, That's the point. And then you eventually just like, okay, I'm just going to lock everything. <laughs> like it, it, it happens, you know. When Austin yeah. told me about it, I remember. I don't know if I told you this, but I remember thinking, why would I review films there when I have my own website? <laughs> and here I am. Yeah, I haven't touched the are. website in months. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So, so the way I've chosen to do Letterbox was I got it. Uh, let's see. I got it in like fall of 2020. And of course, I, yeah, I, I'm on it every single day, multiple times a day. It's the most used app on my phone by a landslide. The way I've chosen to use it is when I first got it, I rated every single thing that I've watched or try, tried to find all of them. I would go by year and just bam, 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 you know, four star, three and a half star, five star, whatever. Yeah. And then now at the beginning of this year, I started logging and putting in my diary every movie I watch. So yeah. I started that. I started that in 2023, like January 1st, I watched... Um, Speaking of Barbie Plaza, what's that fucking movie she was in um, on Netflix? Recently? Yeah. Um, Emily, Emily the Criminal. Yeah, Emily the Criminal. I, that was the first one I like logged on my the way I'm doing it now. So starting in 2023, I will like literally make it make it a journey um, starting there and uh, like see where I get. Great stuff. This is obviously a, you know, they don't pay us, but it's a great ad for uh, <laughs> yeah. for, a, for a letterbox. <laughs> this is a letterbox friendly uh, group here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is. Uh, if you'd like to become a monthly donor, we'd appreciate it here at Film Guys and Productions. Feel free to click the link in the episode description. From there, click on support this podcast. Any amount of donation will go right back into the podcast. We appreciate anything in advance. Uh, thank you guys also for just being here with us and uh, inspiring us to make new stuff. Thanks to the entire Film Guys and team for their contributions to the show. And thank you especially to Cooley Cow for the awesome theme music that you hear at the beginning of the episode. And most of all, thank you to the listeners. Thank you to Connor. Thank you to Adam. Keep watching movies. We'll see you soon.